We're trying to find some evidence to bolster our case against Saren. So we're still in kind of the uh, in the tower section. I've forgotten its exact name, but uh, we picked up a few side quests. We've got some options to pick up some some intel. Uh, so if we have a look at our journal, um, so we need to 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 scan the keepers, which is a bit of a collectathon because there are a lot of keepers scattered throughout the citadel. But we've already been and we've already been past a lot of them. So. Um, yeah, that's going to take a little while. Um, so we need to speak with uh, General Septimus. Um, he's the kind of disgraced human C-Sec member or former member. Um, oh, the, that, that's th those extra things. Um, then we need to find Garrus. Oh, no, 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 no. Harkin is the disgraced C-Sec agent. What am I talking about? And um, we need to speak to uh, the Volus banker, uh, Barla Von, to try and connect to the Shadow Broker, who's like an intel specialist. Oh yeah, yeah, and this is this is the person that's connected to the Asari woman in the. It's not a brothel. <laughs> it's like something of that nature I guess uh, I won't invest those points just yet I don't know how big our squad's going to get or who we're going to get to choose uh, obviously we're going to need to take different build varieties uh, but Ashley's not endeared herself endeared me to her too much with the way she's been acting <laughs> so uh, I'm nowhere. where should we go first where should we go first for these main missions so we'll, we'll scan keepers as we go past them this is in the lower wards, uh, just like uh, Harkin is. So uh, we could go to the lower wards first. I think we'll do that. Could be fun going down there. It's a new location, right? Rather than allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move. But the Volus? No. The Hanner are likely to be next, then the Elcor. Hmm. You may be right, though the Hanar need to lighten up a bit first. <laughs> you just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. Okay, so why are they so against the Volus? Are they too, interest too interested in money or something? The Keeper scan has been uploaded to the database. That was very eventful. Is there going to be one on the other side? Nope. Uh, so he's already scanned that one there that looks like it's kind of cowering a bit. That's one of the really mo most fascinating bits of lore that we've read about the Keepers for sure. So I'm going to stick to running around on foot for a while. I, I generally... I don't like fast traveling, at least in parts of the episodes that I'm going to show. Um, it just kind of breaks immersion a little bit. Uh, this elevator leads down to the Presidium. There you'll find the embassies, the Citadel Tower, the Emporium, the Bank and the Consort Chambers. Behind you is the Citadel Tower. The council convenes at the far end. So this is the Citadel Tower here. Let's go. I don't want to hear anything, Ashley. I can't believe oh. you have to ignore all the evidence against Saren. There was Saren no evidence. Was it's only natural they take his word for ours. Oh, so now we just chase leads while this smug Turian runs around with his geth troopers. That's politics, Chief. Yeah. I hate politics. You hate a lot of things from the sounds of things, Ashley. God. Okay, let's just keep scanning. It's a shame we don't learn anything about them in, as individuals. I'm not doing. You're disturbing the keepers. You stood right next to him. So there's 20 of these things. Oh man. It's like a collectathon mission. 
it believes it has the right to move freely through this area. You're creating a public disturbance. It's against Citadel regulation. What are you talking about? This one is unsure why the other would not wish word of the Enkindlers to be spread. Oh, he's, he's like um, preaching gospel, right? He's like preaching his religion. That Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Um, they are clever enough. Uh, I don't want to... Yeah, w what's going on? Are there laws being broken here? I am not unreasonable. The Hanar is free to spew its nonsense once it purchases an evangelical permit. Um, what are the rules of permit? So if the Hanar gets a permit, it's allowed to preach? No. Registered evangelicals must follow regulations. There are specific areas where preaching is legal. Failure to follow the regulations results in the forfeiture of the license. Um, reason for permit? What's the purpose behind the evangelical permit? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Forcing religious evangelicals to register for a permit weeds out undesirables. It keeps the area safe. The Citadel is too important to become a battleground for yep. a religious war. Ah, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm total, I'm in total agreement with here. <laughs> there's a pretty like, as an atheist, like stuff like this really annoys me. And you know, like when you walk down like a main street in a city, and there's just someone spewing, like, pretty like, of the talking about sinners and the doomsday and. All this stuff, it just, I get so angry <laughs> about stuff like that, because that's going to get into someone's head. Uh, I'm not going to suggest that he arrests it. Um, I'll talk to him. Talk to it. If you'd like, I could talk to the Hannah for, for you. I have argued with the stubborn Jelly all afternoon. You jelly? are certainly welcome to try. Don't, don't call, call it, don't call them names. Oh, they're Preacher. Do you desire to learn no. the Enkindlers? Or has the Honorable CSEC officer enlisted assistance? Yeah, this isn't the way. Is this really how you want to represent the Enkindlers? The truth of the Enkindlers must be made known. They gave the Hanar language and gave the universe the mass relays. This one only wishes to spread the truth to any who will listen. There is no intent to cause trouble. Oh. Can I not say these? Oh, I need more charm. Could I buy your permit? What if I purchase the evangelical permit for you? Finances are only a partial limitation. This one does not believe that one should pay in order to speak the truth. However, this one also does not possess the 150 credits necessary to purchase the permit. I don't want to help him, man. I don't want to help people spread their religious stuff. I know that their religion is based on the Protheans, so it's got like a strong element of truth to it, but... It's still, still preaching, man. I'm not in favour of this. At all. He's not a money grabber, but... Maybe we can come back if we say goodbye, I don't know. So, I wonder if these this is to do with charm and... Intimidate, but um, I don't want to call him a money grabber. I'll see you later. I'll be back. This one will continue to spread its message. Any progress with that Hanar? No, not yet. Sorry, I'll let you know if I come up with something. I don't care what the something is, as long as it rids me of the Hanar. 
Mm. Maybe I should have put that extra point in charm. Uh, I'll come back here. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I kind of just want to not give him the money. <laughs> so, the access for... I'm just going to pretend like that didn't happen. I will not get involved in matters of religious nonsense. So the entrance to the lower wards was down here, so hopefully we've got access to that now. Uh, oh, we should check the map. Points of interest will pop up. That's the quest. Yeah, that's the profit dispute. That's the quest. Uh... I'm sure it was down here. Yep. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Okay, so the attack has kind of quelled popularity. We've not been in space that long though, so... Alright. Wait, where does this go? Nice to see so many humans working for CSEC. Oh, this is CSEC headquarters. Not the lower ward. Ah, oh, we can look around here, sure. Traffic control, CSEC offices. So this is the requisition office. There might be something in here. Oh, hello. A requisition officer. Looking you up. Commander Shepard, here with the Alliance military. First time on the Citadel, that about right? Sure. How did you know all that? I'm the CSEC requisitions officer. I need to make sure our buyers are authorized. So, will you be purchasing anything today, Commander Shepard? Uh, sure. Show me what you've got. Excellent. I uh, hope you find what you're looking for. Uh, I do find it a little odd that none of the Turians we've seen were augmented in the kind of way that Saren was, right? Um, I just think it all of his implants, to me at least, looked really Geth-like, so I just feel like someone might have been a bit suspicious about that. Okay, all this stuff is massively expensive. Common, 37,000, 20,000, 10,000, 3,000. Okay, that's rubbish. Aldrin Labs license for the Normandy Quartermaster. I've no idea what that is, but it's cheap. Seems like a quest item, right? Increases maximum number of grenades carried by one. Sure. I'll pick up any cheap stuff. Everything else is way too expensive. But we can sell stuff, right? Some of the basic Betty stuff. Oh. Right, we need to increase our Intimidate. That'll make mean that we can sell things for a higher price. So I'll be back. I imagine, I don't know if this is going to be a location we come back to multiple times. It kind of seems that way. Okay, we'll uh, head straight across, check out the offices. Yeah, look, all these Turians, I know that they're CSEC officers, but none of them have any kind of augment uh, mechanical augmentations. 
So there's plenty of Salarian officers as well. All races operate. I don't know if it's only council races. Let me get this straight. Your business partner, Shoreman, he's threatened you? Well, no, uh, not exactly. But he wants to meet with me. I think he's going to kill me. And why do you think that? I... I can't really get into the details. But Shorbin will kill me if I leave here unprotected. I can't help you. Not unless you give me something more to go on. I... I can't. I'm sorry. Then I've got other work to do. But I... But nothing. Don't bother me unless you're willing to give me details. Shorban was the, um, Solarian who gave us the quest for the Keepers, right? Hey there! Oh, you're not CSEC, are you? Nope. Did you want something? I've got a problem with Choban, I overheard you. What were you trying to explain to the officer before? My colleague is trying to kill me, and I thought we were friends. Kill you? Why? How do you know he wants you dead? He's changed. He won't talk to me at work anymore, and he started following me. Yesterday, he followed me all the way home, just waiting for a chance. I don't care what anyone thinks. He wants me gone. I know it. How can I help? Is there something I can do? Uh, talk to your friend, maybe? Would you? That's all I want. Someone to talk to him. Tell him to leave me alone. He thinks he can just push me around. But you'll show him, won't you? Well, I'll talk to him. Just tell me where he is and I'll go find him. Oh, right. Well, he wanted to meet with me down in the wards near the markets. He said he just wanted to talk, but I know better. His name's Shorban. He's a Salarian. You shouldn't have any trouble. Yeah. He's just a scientist. Yeah, we know him. Shorban? That's the guy who asked us to scan the Keepers. The Keepers? Well... Even more reason to go after him. Mm. That's against regulations. Uh, good point. I better look into this right away. Find out what he's up to. Anything's possible with Shorbin these days. Well, good luck. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I trust this guy. Jalid. Hey there. Hello, Commander. Oh, hello. I guess all these guys work for... C oh, no. Not all of them work for CSEC. These people are talking to the officers. Fair enough. But they might not be Volus officers. Voli officers. I don't know what the plural would be. Nice to see so many humans working for CSEC. I guess. Traffic control. This should be exciting. <laughs> wonder if we could get, like, vehicle upgrades. Codex entries. A keeper. Another codex entry. Don't do that in the police station, Matt. Wow, that was that that was all codex entries. Okay, sweet. We'll read them now. More information is good information, right? Okay, so we've got weapons, armor, Combat and equipment. Hard suits use a dual layer system. All modern. Right, small arms. All modern infantry weapons, from pistols to assault rifles, use micro-scaled mass accelerator technology. Projectiles consist of tiny metal slugs suspended within a mass-reducing field, accelerated by magnetic force to speeds that inflicts kinetic damage. The ammo magazine is a simple block of metal. The gun's internal computer calculates the mass needed to reach the target based on distance, gravity and atmospheric pressure. Then it shears off an appropriate sized slug from the block. A single block can supply thousands of rounds, making ammo a non-issue during any engagement. Okay, fair enough. Top-line weapons also feature smart targeting that allows them to create for weather and environment. Firing on a target in a howling gale feels the same as it does on a calm day on a practice range. 
Smart targeting doesn't mean a bullet will automatically find the mark every time the trigger is pulled. It only makes it easier for the marksman to aim. Combat hard suits you all kinetic barriers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how... It's weird when you get some stuff like that that's not as necessarily as tangible. We use the guns, but that information is not really going to affect anything we interact with the guns unless the crafting kind of ties in with some of that information. Okay, so uh, we've got information about all different kinds of ships. Uh, this should be interesting. Okay, let's just... So we need to read these four, so I'll just click on them to stop them flashing. Okay, so uh, cruisers. Cruiser weight starships are the standard combat unit encountered away from larger naval bases. The poor bloody infantry of most fleets. Nimble scouting frigates have neither the punch nor the stamina to stand up to serious combat. And the mighty dreadnoughts are a strategic resource carefully hoarded and committed to the most critical battles. Cruiser platform routine... Cruisers perform routine independent show the flag patrols in settled systems and lead floati floatil floatiers of uh, float it'd be floatiers right and lead flotillas flotillas I want to say it like tortilla basically <laughs> and lead floati floatiers of frigates in small engagements such as pirate suppression campaigns in major, uh, in major fleet engagements, cruiser squadrons support the Dreadnought battle line by screening their flanks against enemies attempting to manoeuvre for a main gun bow shot from their vulnerable broadsides. Alliance cruisers are named after cities of Earth. Dreadnought class starships. The Dreadnought is the ultimate arbiter of space warfare. Millions of tons of metal, ceramic and polymer dedicated to the projection of firepower against an enemy vessel of like ability. No sane commander would face a dreadnought with anything less than another dreadnought. A dreadnought's power lies in the length of its main gun. Dreadnoughts range from 800 meters to 1 kilometer long, while with a main gun of commensurate length. An 800 meter mass accelerator is capable of accelerating one 2 kilogram slug to a velocity of 283 kilometers per second every two seconds. Each slug has the kinetic energy of 38 kilotons of TNT, three times the energy released by the fission weapon that dest destroyed Hiroshima. When used to bombard planets, some of this kinetic energy is lost due to atmospheric re-entry friction. As a rule of thumb, each Earth atmosphere of air, air pressure saps approximately 20% of a projectile's impact energy. The Turian fleet presently has 37 dreadnoughts, the Asari 21, the Solarians 16, Humanity has 6, with additional hull under construction at Arcturus Station, with, with an additional hull under construction at Arcturus Station. Alliance battleships are named for mountains of Earth. Everest class, Everest, Fuji, Elbrus. Kilimanjaro class, Kilimanjaro, Taishan, Chasta, Aconcagua, under construction. Interesting. So I guess the main problem with the, the whole infrastructure of the council and everything, it's just it's all so centralised, right? Um, and pe like, people aren't going to like that. and Eventually there will be some kind of, you, you would imagine there'd be some kind of uprising, right? Okay, so air fighters. Fighters are single pilot combat small craft. They are lightweight enough that they can be economically fitted with powerful element zero cores, making them capable of greater acceleration and sharper maneuvers than starships. Kinetic barrier shields. Kinetic barrier shields ch changed starship battles from short, vicious bloodbaths to extended, indecisive slugging matches. Only the main gun of a dreadnought could punch a ma mass accelerator slug through the barriers of an opposing dreadnought. This changed with the development of the fighter launched mass disruptor torpedo, a short range weapon that can penetrate kinetic barriers to destroy their projector assemblies. Starship Guardian defenses must be overwhelmed through swarm tactics. Fighter groups can take heavy casualties pressing their torpedo attacks home. Once fighter launch torpedoes have crippled an enemy's barriers, the mass accelerators on frigates and cruisers can make short work of them. Interceptors are a type of fighter optimized to attack other fighters with no ability to, d to damage starships. 
Interceptors are used to screen friendly units from incoming fighter attack. This is a little weird how everyone's like everyone in the uh, within the um, I forgot what it's called. Is it the humanities for? Systems Alliance, right? The Citadel is an ancient deep space. The Citadel is... I can't think what this, like, the, what everyone collectively is called. My mind's just gone blank. Because it's not the count. Is it the council? No, it's not the council. Um, let's just call it the galactic government um, yeah it's just how everyone's got kind of like the same technology it, just, it kind of like neutralizes a lot a lot of things right okay yeah frigates frigates are light escort and scouting vessels they often have extensive guardian systems to provide anti-fighter screening for capital ships and carry a squad of marines for security and groundside duty. Unlike larger vessels, frigates are able to land on planets. Frigate drive systems allow them to achieve high, faster than light cruise speeds. They also have proportionally larger thrusters and lighter design mass, allowing them to maneuver more handily. In combat, speed and maneuverability make a frigate immune to the long range fire of larger vessels. In the time it takes projectiles to reach them, frigates are no longer where they were predicted to be. In fleet combat, frigates are organized into wolf pack flotillas of four to six. Wolf packs speed through enemy formations, hunting enemy vessels whose kinetic barriers have been taken down by fighter launched disruptor torpedoes. The wolf pack circle strafes vulnerable targets, using their superior speed and maneuverability to evade return fire. Alliance frigates are named for great battles in human history. So I guess these made are probably just class names. They're not the exact same ship, exact same ships for each race. Maybe it's just like a loose, loose, loose class definition. The Presidian Prophet, yeah, and Jaleed Spheres. Okay, let's uh, see if we can head down to the wards. I think this is the way down there. Nothing we can do in here. I don't think there's anything down here, is there? Yeah, maybe there is. Hello. Oh, there we go. The Solarian excavation team has run into an unexpected problem after unearthing a Prothean dig site. Oh. Hanar protesters have blockaded the dig site, claiming that artifacts of the Enkindlers, as the Hanar oh. call them, should not be disturbed. The excavation team has appealed to Hanar representatives on the Citadel to reach a diplomatic solution. See, man, that's religion getting in the way. Getting in the way of discovery. The Hanar, man. No, I'm not a big fan of the Hana so far. Officer Lang? Hey there. Hey, I know you. You're Shepard, right? I saw the monument at Akuz. They got a whole section about you there. It's oh. a miracle you survived. Looks like you have a fan. I'm sorry, I just never thought I'd meet someone like you in person. Uh, my name's Lang, Officer Eddie Lang, Citadel Security. It's an honor to meet you, Commander. What are you doing down here in the wards? Anything I can help you with? Maybe. Uh, do you know where Harkin is? Do you know a CSEC officer named Harkin? I shouldn't really say too much. He's been <laughs> on the force a lot longer than me. But I've heard things, you know? Drinking on the job, taking bribes, that kind of thing. Rumors mostly, but they suspended him, so some of it must be true. 
Uh, opinion on the Spectres? CSEC agents tend to have a lower opinion of them. What do you know about Spectres? Just the stuff they show in the vids. They always make them out to be super agents on secret missions to save the galaxy. I know it's not really like that, though. Some of the other CSEC guys don't like them too much. Figure they shouldn't be able to operate outside the law. But if they were so bad, the Council wouldn't use them, right? Hmm, maybe. But the problem is, you'd need, like, a group of sub-spectres to keep an eye on the spectres, right? To shadow them, maybe follow them, stalk them, just to make, to, you know, keep an eye on what they're doing. Now, what do you know about the Citadel? How do you like working here on the Citadel? This place is amazing. I've been here almost a year, and I still haven't seen a tenth of it. <laughs> the Presidium's just so beautiful. Good place to go and relax. But I really like it here down in the wards. There's always something going on somewhere. Like that new club they just opened a few months ago, Flux. Wicked scene in there, Commander. <laughs> you should check it out when you have some time. Sure, thank you. Now, like the way everyone compliments this place, and it's kind of a, got a bit of a, a mystery at the center of it, the millions of people that live here, how important it is to the galactic government. Like, I'm just like giving a prediction here. Like, kind of feels like this place is going to get blown up <laughs> at some point, right? It seems so important. Like, the system of the council and everything seems so entrenched. Like, if you really wanted to try and get rid of that, this place would be, like, target number one, right? What can you tell me about CSEC? Why'd you join Citadel Security? I don't know. Seemed like the right thing to do, you know? Maybe it's in my blood. My grandfather was a cop back on Earth. It's kind of what CSEC is. At yeah. least for the Citadel. I'm still pretty new at it, but I like it so far. Way more interesting than staying back on Earth. You get to meet all kinds of cool aliens, like those Hanar. Wild. Plus, CSEC gets a lot of respect here. We uphold the law. People, even aliens, appreciate that. I wouldn't call the Hanar wild. <laughs> a bunch of floating priests. No, except not the wildest thing you've ever seen. But fair enough, buddy. All right, officer. Thanks for your time. I have to go. Right. You're probably real busy. Well, see you around, Commander. Someone needs to teach these people how to salute, man. <laughs> Public extranet terminal. Oh, codex entry. Sweet. Uh, communications, administration. While convoys allow rapid transmission, there is an inf there is a finite amount of bandwidth available. Given that trillions of people may have been trying to pass a message through a given boy at any one time, access to the network is parceled out on priority tiers. Of course it is. The Citadel Council and the Spectres have absolute priority. If they're using all the bandwidth, everyone else must wait. Individual governments and their militaries enjoy the next highest tier. During wartime, civilian communication can suffer hours or even days of lag. Intelligence agencies study ping time through various systems <laughs> to predict military buildups. Below the governments and militaries, bandwidth priority is sold to the highest bidder. Media conglomerates, particularly headline news networks, purchase higher priority to provide their viewers with timely information. Corporations that require timely information Corporations that require timely information and response capability, for example financial institutions and investment firms, also invest heavily in priority access. The funds acquired through sales of bandwidth are used to maintain and expand the communications infrastructure. While everyone with a computer has guaranteed free and unlimited access to the galactic extranet, they are last in line for bandwidth and may have to wait for their requests to be processed. Bandwidth resale corporations use investment capital to purchase blocks of high priority access made available by paid subscription. There's just so much baked in privilege with the council, right? It's just like really elitist um, that, kind of, that really bothers me, I guess. So that's pronounced Shorban, not Shorban. He, he might have said it when we spoke to him and I overlooked it. The elevate, yeah, CSEC Academy. Now let's check the map down here. Uh, what? Med clinic? What med clinic? Did we miss a door? Oh, it's because we changed uh, levels. 
Fair enough. All right. Got a highway, man. Look at this place. Giant. Okay, the sounds kind of phasing in and out here. Okay, uh, let's go check them. Check out the med clinic. Get some drugs. <laughs> Oh, that's rapid trap. Okay, another keeper. Uh, hello there, med clinic. Dr. Chloe Mitchell. Dr. Chloe Michelle. Michelle. Replenish the medigel. Yeah, sure. Codex entry. Combat heart. Medi Be quiet. Medigel is a common medicinal salve used by paramedics, EMTs, and military personnel. It combines several useful applications, a local anaesthetic, disinfectant, and clotting agent all in one. Once applied, the gel is designed to grip tight to flesh until subjected to a frequency of ultrasound. It is sealable against liquids, most notably blood, as well as contaminants and gases. The gel is genetically engineered bioplasm created by the Serta Foundation. A medical technology mega corporation based on Earth. Technically, Medigel violates council laws against genetic engineering, but so far it's provided it's proved far too useful to ban. Fascinating. Genet so it's technically genetic engineering. Hmm. Seems a bit strange. For something that would save so many lives to be thought of in that sense. Not too busy in here, eh, Doctor? Hey there, Chloe. Hello there, Commander. I'm Dr. Chloe Michel. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, how do you like it here? You're a doctor. How did you end up here on the Citadel? My parents brought me here when I was young. My father was a medic with the Alliance. I chose to keep the medical tradition alive, but not the military. Fixing up wounded soldiers isn't my idea of fun. Okay, French. Supplies? Let me take a look at what you have for sale. Of course. Yeah, yeah, everything to exp uh, Anything low? Microprocessors wired into a combat suit, uh, plus one health regen. That could be useful. Plus 1.5, that's very expensive. Yeah, let's pick this one up. Thank you, Chloe. We can't talk to everyone. Okay, that leads to the Presidium. There's the upper market. It's an alleyway. Let's check out the alleyway. Oh no, God, I thought the game crashed. Hey, another keeper. I'm picking up money for that, are we? <laughs> are we like pickpocketing them? <laughs> okay, this is a bit of a weird shortcut, but whatever. Where the hell are we? Oh, Cora's Den. Sure is Den? I don't know how to talk anymore. Oh, there's Shoban. Oh god, he's surrounded by goons. We've walked into it here. Oh, is that a Krogan? Let's quick let's save scum here. Hey there, Krogan. Look just like a muton from XCOM. I realise you were designed before XCOM, but still. It doesn't look too much like a muton. It's just the hunch. The hunch is like reminds me of the muton armor. 
Sorry, I play too much XCOM 2. And then Morlin. Hello there. Welcome to Morland's famous shop. You want many good supplies, yes? Yes. Let me see what you have. Oh, you will be pleased, I think. Very good things I have. You will see. I think we'll have it. I think we're going to run into some Solarians who are really slick talkers. Like, I really like the Solarians. I have to admit, the, um, the Asaris that we've met so far, we've only met a few, like the receptionist, the, the, the one who gave us the mission, and... Uh, the other the other Asari who worked there, they creep me out a little bit. Like the the way they kind of move and the way she was like kind of touch stroking our face and leaning towards us kind of just creeped me out a little bit. Um their behaviour, you know. Let's have a look. We've only got humans on the team at the minute, so I'm guessing this we're gonna get so from the sounds of this, we're gonna get a we're gonna have Krogans, Quarians, Turians. Fascinating. So we're going to get all sorts of people, Ashley, so you're going to have to <laughs> broaden your horizons. Oh, you're a Turian. Okay, so this guy's like a, more of like a civilian looking Turian. We've only really seen kind of armoured or military looking Turian so far. Interesting. Okay, Shoban. Commander. I wasn't expecting to see you again. Is there something you want? Yeah, the truth, please, mate. You can start by telling me the truth, Shorban. I'm not sure what you're referring to. My experiments are... Quit stalling. Jaleed told us what you've been up to. You spoke with Jaleed? Then you know about the data? Uh, not yet. No, but you're going to tell me everything. You boys can go. Sweet. Looks like my plans have changed. Sorry. Not as bad as you think, Commander. Jaleed and I just got a little over our heads. How so? Keep talking. The company we work for developed an experimental procedure for use in medical scanners. Jaleed and I saw even more potential, so we stole the plans and secretly developed a tool to scan the keepers. Can you imagine? A tool that can actually get readings from the keepers? So... What's so special about that? The keepers are almost impossible to scan, and you can't capture them or get samples. They just self-destruct. Oh, self-destruct. After centuries here, we still don't know anything about them. Yeah. Don't you see? We were the first to scan them, ever. You've seen it yourself, Commander. You know we can do it. Uh, what about your lead? What's, what's his problem? Why are you trying to kill your partner? I'm not trying to kill him. Jaleed's job was to disseminate our initial findings. But he decided to keep the data for himself. Yeah. Maybe to sell it. I don't know. What? So you're just trying to get back what Jaleed already stole. We lost our heads. We just couldn't mm. let an opportunity like this pass us by. Commander. If you'll just continue gathering okay. data for me, imagine what we might learn. And you'll stand to make a bit of a profit yourself, remember? Oh. All right. I suppose a little scanning here and there won't hurt anyone. Very good. Maybe if you wouldn't mind speaking with Jaleed. The data you're gathering for me is useless if Jaleed won't help me analyze it. Sure. If I have time, I'll talk to him. Thank you. And happy scanning, Commander. Thanks, Shobam. Okay, so we need to go back to Jaleed. Not like having to open all these doors manually. <laughs> so, so lazy. Okay, so we are at Chora's Den. Uh, let me remind myself of what's here. Uh, yeah, this is where Harkin is. Uh, was there something else here? No, 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 no. Yeah, and the uh, and General Septimus is here as well. Excellent. So we'll talk to General Septimus. That's her. Assassin. Oh! Take cover! I really wasn't expecting that. Those were Saren's men. All clear. 
God, that scared the hell out of me, dude. Too many lights, too much noise. You can keep the Presidium. This is where the action is. Oh, God, Ashley. <laughs> Uh, where are those, the bodies of those guys? Have their bosses, bosses, bodies disappeared? Yes, damn you, game mechanics. Not really my kind of place, but there sure are some spectacular views here. So we're above like a motorway. Skyway, whatever you call it. Oh god. Asari dancers. Okay, so we're looking for Harkin and we're looking for Septimus. Might be other people to speak to here. Uh oh. I see what you're about to suggest here, game. A private dance. <laughs> ah, dear me. Right, hello there. Oh, sorry, Jenna. Hey there, Mr. Krogan. I got business here, but not with you. Okay. Commander. Oh, there we go. What do you want? Shira, uh, Shira sent me. I'm here on Shaira's behalf. Your lies are hurting her. Good. The lies have been killing me for days. I've seen a lot of horrible things in my days, and there's only one woman in this damn galaxy that helps me forget. So if you feel that way, then why spread lies about her? Because she rejected me. Me! Septimus Araka, General of the Turian Fleet. Huh. Um... I understand. You're heartbroken, General. I think I can see why you're upset, but spreading these lies won't make it better. Look, kid, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but don't waste your time. No! I'm not leaving, dude. You need to start acting like a general if you want to beat this. I spent all my life acting like a general, and what did it get me? Huh? No. Those days are over. I'll just be what I am. A tired... Lonely, worn out soldier. Uh, come on, General. Don't give up. Do you really want to be remembered this way? No, I'd rather not be remembered at all. But I see your point. So you think it's that easy? Just straighten up and act like a general? I don't think it could hurt. Huh. Maybe you're right, Commander. Shaira's worth the effort, even if she won't have me back. Uh, glad to hear it, buddy. You changed your mind extremely quickly. <laughs> this is no place for someone of your stature, General. All right, I'll go to her. After I've had a cold shower or two. Say, you're a bright kid. Would you be interested in earning a few extra credits? Pens. What do you want me to do? There's an Elcor diplomat out there who believes Shaira gave up his secrets. Why does he think that? Because I told him. Look, I just need you to convince him of the truth. How? What makes you think he'll believe me? You'll bring him proof. Take this data pad. It shows where I got my info. It will exonerate Shaira and convince the Elcor. Oh yeah, it's the guy in the uh, in the embassy, right? He's in the embassy, right? Who am I taking it to? And where is he? His name is Zelt. Yeah. He's an Elcor diplomat. Yeah, bit, He's yeah. over in the embassies complaining about Shaira. We've spoken to him. Well, here's the soldiers acting like soldiers. The hell was that noise? Thanks, Commander. You know, you might make a good general yourself one day. Yeah. I'll try not to be a general. Imagine a general like that getting so upset about a woman. That's because you don't understand women. Oh, these two, it's like having like two 15 year olds walk with you everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he, he changed his tune remarkably quick. Um, he, he looked really thin though, I guess all the Turians we've seen have quite heavy armor on, I suppose. Not now. I'm watching the show. 
Yeah, I can see that, mate. Okay, this must be Harkin. Back off, Rex. This told us to take you down if you showed up. What are you waiting for? I'm standing right here. Mm -hmm. This is Fist's only chance. If he's smart, he'll take it. He's not coming out, Rex. End of story. The story is just beginning. Out of my way, humans. I have no quarrel with you. What was that? <laughs> Who knows? Let's just try not to get caught in the middle. Oh, man. Krogans. That guy seemed cool. Krogans, Krogans, Krogans. The Elcor, the Krogan. The Krogan evolved into a hostile and vicious. Sorry, not into. <laughs> the Krogan evolved in a hostile and vicious environment until the invention of gunpowder weapons eaten by predators was still the number one cause of Krogan fatalities. Afterwards, it was death by gunshot. When the Salarians discovered them, the Krogan were a brutal, primitive species struggling to survive a self-inflicted nuclear winter. The Salarians culturally uplifted them, teaching them to use and build modern technology so they could serve as soldiers in the Ran Rachni War. Liberated from the harsh conditions of their homeworld, the quick breeding Krogan experienced an unprecedented population explosion. They began to colonize nearby worlds even though these worlds were already inhabited. The Krogan rebellions lasted nearly a century, only ending when the Turians unleashed a genophage. A Salarian developed a bioweapon that crushed all Krogan resistance. The genophage makes only 1 in 1,000 pregnancies viable, and today the Krogan are, slow, are slowly dying breed. Understandably, the Krogan harbour a grudge against all other species, especially the Turians. That's horrendous, man. You just basically make an entire species infertile. And that's, that, that's genocide, man. They're genophages. That's ridiculous. And these, these serious moral grey areas. Hammerhead, I thought that said hemorrhoid rounds. <laughs> Hammerhead rounds. Oh, that was funny. Sorry. Okay, if we're going to run into kind of ambush fights, we should get these upgrades going. Um, okay, let's uh, let's give you a couple of uh, adrenaline burst. Recharges all talents. Good, good, good. Um, Oh, right, so if we put four points in pistols. Seven. Oh, that's how that works. So if we put six points in pistols, we'll get basic armor upgrades. Uh, seven points in decryption will get us hacking. Five points in. Right, 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 right. I understand at last. Um. I don't know, it feels like shotguns would have been important for. For Ashley, but putting points into pistols is su such a weird commitment, right? I say we just keep loading the points into assault rifles. Alright, let's put one into soldier and one into assault rifles. Then Caden, Sentinel, so he has some uh, biotic abilities, right? So. So let's give him two in Sentinel. Uh, uh, heal, we can do quite a bit of healing, so we'll leave that for now. We, we've got Decryption, so... Uh, so immobilizing a target tactically uh, would be really useful, right? So let's uh, put a couple of points in Barrier. And it, it, gives, it gives us better shields, so... That's pretty useful, right? Okay, so that's how we unlock damping because we put a lot of points, right? I understand. Uh, how much? Ex 
Uh, uh, we're reasonably close to leveling up again. Alright, so we've got Harkin. We've got... Uh, have we picked up another side quest? Oh no, that's Shaira. Speak to Zeltan. Zeltan is at the... Oh yeah, yeah Zeltan. Oh, we, so we haven't picked up a quest to do with the Krogans. Where did that Krogan go though? Uh, whatever his name was, began with an X. I imagine we just go talk to the bouncer to, to solve it. Anyway guys, this episode's run a bit longer. The time has snuck up on me. Uh, let's just find an angle where we're not staring at someone's arse. Right, so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. We've made our way down to the wards. Um, we've kind of investigated a few side quests. We got ambushed by those assassins. We've met some Krogans finally. I really, I, seem, I quite like them. Their backstory is really tragic as well. I'm not obviously the they started a war, but the that kind of that genophage that the Turians released on them seems extreme beyond belief right so we'll leave the episode there hope you enjoyed this one leave me a thumbs up if you did just remember everybody never trust an on crate i'll uh, see you back in the strip club i forgot what it's called char something i'll see you then